All right, folks, this time on this episode of Young Justice Review, we have Failsafe, episode 16. I'm here with Rich. Rich, what's going on, man? What's going on? You're waiting for... Uh, I'm here to discuss another Young Justice Review. I'm excited. Yeah, so am I. To give you guys the skinny on this episode, it is a training program with a mission to fail so no matter what happens it's a mission that is doomed to fail it's always going to fail a training exercise implemented by martian manhunter with batman and red tornado there as well oh, captain then, marvel there's some justice league members there captain marvel's kind of been hanging around red tornado's the dead mother Martian Manhunter is the person that it's administering the training, and then Batman is there because you know Batman always needs to be there, which is fine. I was just gonna make it say Batman was there to make sure Robin kept his glasses on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I like that. This is administered to them. They're under some sort of psychic thingy, and we deal with loss in this episode. It's almost as if everybody pretty yeah, and that's basically the case. Everybody is zapped by this mothership alien thingy. And it's up to our heroes now to take over. I like that part where he Aqualat says Justice League, you know, very astute and firm. A great episode if you're looking to see our heroes are under duress and what they have to do. Really, this is now crunch time. This is probably the strongest mission that they've ever had to have done, at least so far in the series. So everything is has to be at their disposal. Come to find out that one on one, one by one, our heroes are starting to get picked off. Artemis, Aqualad, Aqualad dies in a crazy way. Superboy, and then Robin, Kid Flash, a part of this episode says, "You knew what this was." He, him, and Kid Flash kind of like nod to themselves and agree that okay, a suicide mission. This is this is going to be you know we're going to sacrifice ourselves. Yeah, suicide mission. And they're a strong, strong decision to keep Martian Manhunter and Miss Martian because they would, in theory, be the strongest people there, the strongest Martians there, of course, naturally. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, a little bit of, we do get uh, Red Arrow in this as well. We get uh, Tula and Garth come back. Yeah, we do see some, like, little side characters, but they're kind of not the point. See how our heroes would react. It's called Failsafe. So see their training and everything that kind of comes into play now. No light, no mole in this episode. They do that. They kind of give you one thing and then they go an episode or two to do something else. But this all kind of leads because you you build up a story. So that is episode 16, Failsafe. Rich, tell me and the audience what you thought about this episode. I thought it was a pretty good episode. Um, a little, lot of little things in there. Liked how we didn't really know what was really going on to the end. They surprised us with the whole Failsafe thing. I know a lot of people hate it when they do the whole you know, dream sequence yeah. or virtual reality, like, oh, that never really happened. But I thought it was kind of cool because, I mean, I thought something was up because the episode was kind of moving a little too fast into the destruction. It know? was moving fast, right? The show's not over, so there's no way all these people are dead. Unless they're going in a totally different direction with the show. I really enjoyed, well, yeah, another hint of Wally's feelings for Artemis. Mm-hmm. He goes ballistic when she um, supposedly dies. Yeah, bro, because he's going to miss that poof. Um, I would like to point out that they say at the end of the episode, her dying, this, like, their conscious minds knew it was meant to fail, but subconscious mind, somehow, with Morris Martian, it didn't know that, so they didn't, like, communicate. And since Miss Martian's more powerful, they reveal Miss Martian's actually more powerful than Martian Man. Woo! Yeah, bro, she was and, floating. She was on some exorcist stuff. Yeah, and she... Her mind, her subconscious mind, since she was saying when, Mar- when Artemis died, she, um, since she didn't, her subconscious mind didn't know, it kind of affected, affected the others. Mm-hmm. And Wally went crazy. Um, Robin was more Batman-like than I've ever seen him in the show. I agree. He was very stoic. Um, he's like, mission first. Yeah, bro. You gotta. With the mission like that, 
killing every Justice League member. That's it. Yeah, and he didn't care. Like he sacrificed. He made a a call to sacrifice Superboy, and he let them believe because Wally originally Wally thought that it's not it wasn't killed. But they, when they saw Martin uh, Martian Manhunter, they thought they saw him. They saw him. They saw him die earlier. So they saw Martian Manhunter. Said they thought, okay, this is not a device. These things aren't killing them. They're mm-hmm. teleporting them. Gave Wally some hope. Robin was scanning for them the whole time without us seeing them, and he knew. No, no, they're fucking. They're dead. They're dead. He didn't. He couldn't explain Martian Manhunter, but he's like, they're dead. And he, I made it a call to lie to his friends. Not really lie, but he didn't say anything, which is almost as bad. And he knew his, He knew he was sacrificing Superboy. He knew what he was doing. Yeah, man. And big boy mission. Got to put on the big boy pants. Yeah, I mean, he took control. I guess I gotta give him that credit. After after their leader Aqualad dies, he takes control. They didn't step on Aqualad's toes either. Aqualad being the leader. Well, he's a leader, but then he dies, and then yeah. Robin, they didn't step on Robin's toes. They That's argue right. with him a little bit, but they kind of let him do what he needs to do. I like the fact that we see, like, we see, um, like, the U.S. military. We see, like, the world, like, the, what you were talking about before, when we saw, like, the little cameos from everyone. It was nice to see the world kind of really respected them. I mean, even if it was a simulation. They sacrificed themselves. The general says, you guys are more important than we are. And then... Zap, that S is gone. Yeah, I thought it was really funny the way they kept calling Superboy Superman. Yeah, it's a, it's a little thing. We haven't heard a lot about Superboy Superman dynamic in a little bit. I remember watching the episode and I was saying, oh yeah, that's right. Superboy and Superman have that thing. I forgot. Um, Which is nice because, you know, Superman is kind of like... At one point, that was kind of funny where Superboy was like, he has a fortress of solitude. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, it's like I didn't know that. It's like, Bro, the guy doesn't want anything to do with you. Why would you know about them? In this episode, you get them in their... They have uh, kind of like stealth suits, but for the snow or any winter-like conditions. And it's all white. It kind of looked a little like the Court of Owls for Robin, the thing that he was wearing. Wait, do you know about the snow when they were camouflaged for the snow? Yeah, that their snow camo- their, uh, snow I sort of gear, you know? I thought he kind of looked like Red Robin from the comics. Yeah, it looked kind of cool. I, I like one, that we got that. Way. What was nice is Bioship can also, her physiology, adapt and adjust to anything. They take There's a part where they take the missile thing off of one of the ships, and it can kind of, like, attach itself, Bioship. A little interesting stuff. A strong character development episode. Dealing with loss dealing with grief but also having to stick to the mission it's it's a very tough thing to have to consider and kind of similar to how the u.s release of mario brothers the second Mar- super mario brothers mario was dreaming it's basically the same thing you get that sort of in this case they're under some sort of psychic suspension and really what winds up happening wally gets sad that Artemis died. The poof is gone. So he's poofless, you know, and he starts slapping the thing. He doesn't slap the base. I liked Aqualad's strength as a leader because I was looking for that and I thought that was pretty cool. Still, sad. A tough episode, but moves very quick. Shocking, too. I mean, that whole thing is an old trope, though. They do that in TVs and movies all the time where they something to dream. Yeah, you think it's real, but it's like, no, no, the whole thing was a dream. It's kind of almost a little overdone. Okay. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I'm gonna a little, I'm gonna, even though I'm not actually that old, I'm gonna date my knowledge. Um, there's this show, I never watched it actually, a show called Dallas. It's, it was a live action show, it's called Dallas. And oh, Dallas. I've never watched they, it. And I never watched it either, but from what I understand, like, one of the seasons was like just a dream. And I'm just saying it's kind of related. It's like it's an old trope in shows. It is with um, you know the whole dream and stuff. But and usually as a cop out. That's actually usually seen as a cop out. But in this, it kind of helped develop the story, like you said. And it shows. Okay, it does a few things. It it shows Wally's feelings for Artemis, mm-hmm. which I'm sure the audience is tired of us talking about. It shows Mar- Miss Martian how powerful she is. Oh, yeah, they say they're in love in this episode, too. With Super yeah, Martian. yeah, I mean, well, that love part, yeah, but I'm talking about her Martian power. Like, yeah, my power uh, we were talking power. about it 
you know, she's OP. Like, it shows why Robin, at least at this point, would not. Would, 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 why it's good that he wasn't the leader. You yeah, know, 13, it shows like I'm a, thirteen years old, ready to sacrifice. It shows why he's not a leader because he's willing to sacrifice for the greater good. Well, Aqualad's not willing. Aqualad, you know, what do you say to them? He said, "Okay, the arm, you know, before the, the military, he wanted the military first, mm-hmm. like through that portal." But he probably would have at least put like the Martian Manhunter. Yeah. Maybe I think, even I all think he would have went Martian Manhunter, Miss Martian, and then maybe a couple of Sibs. Maybe, maybe Kid Flash, Superboy, and Aqualad. He would have let the he probably would let the people with the powers go first. Right. He probably he probably would have stayed back himself. She's one of the But that shows why Aqualad is the better leader at this, mm-hmm. least at this point, because he's not he's willing to see more of a big picture. But the end when they woke up, I thought it was a nice touch that Robin had his sunglasses on still. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was kind of a cool touch that like, Batman so far, like, he probably thought they probably was like, I got to be there in case this kid takes off his sunglasses. Yeah, 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 yeah. A motive. Yeah, I cannot, An objective I now for a character. What would you rate this episode? I'd probably give you what I did last, last episode, probably 8 out of 10. 8? Yeah. Um, you know what? No, no, any seven and a half out of 10. Oh, wow. You went down? Because I thought it was a good episode, but it happened so fast, and we revealed a lot of stuff. It wasn't as exciting as some of the other episodes I saw. Mm. It was cool and stuff, but I kind of thought something was up because it just went too fast, like the destruction and stuff. It was in a way, in that way, it was kind of predictable. So I'm going to give this a nine. Here's why. Nine? Oh, wow. Yeah. Even though it's a quick episode blink sometimes in a couple of spots and you might miss something there was a whole process to kind of go about the camping out when robin's on that rock and they're looking up and kind of planning things as they go along there's certain little things in this episode when robin takes his thing out and he says these are the weak points on this gun thing robin and Kid Flash nodding, realizing that it's time, basically. This is everything they've not dreamed of, but this is now a culmination of their work. And having to make strong decisions when you now are faced with something that you could theorize could happen, the death of the entire Justice League, and now you are the next in line. Realizing that and then still having to do what you need to do we don't get riffs in this episode. It's really just straightforward and having Drummer. to adjust in certain situations. And also like and those, those little things that they do. Although one thing I think that they missed is if it was this type of mission, why didn't they bring Dr. Fate's helmet, Naboo? That's my only little gripe. Repeat that. You, you, that why would they bring Dr. Fate's helmet? Even though they may not have fully understood that it's a mission to fail while they're in that psychic suspension, Aqualad wasn't afraid to bring the mask at one point. And if you're coming up with this, where basically the Justice League has all died, at least try to bring Naboo for something or just exhaust as many options as you can. Oh, and no yeah. Zatanna in this episode, too. Zatanna would have been cool. Oh, I get what you're saying. So you're saying that that's, a, that's they should... another potential op- option. So they didn't use every single option available. Naboo's mask, his helmet is still probably on the sill, on the cabinet thingy. So that's what I think. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I thought you meant for some reason. I thought you meant in the like like while he would grab it before he went in the simulation or something. Oh no 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 no! While well, in the simulation. That. Yeah, they should have thought about that. Um. Yeah, that's that's another that's a, that's a good point. Like you said, they should have really thought about stuff. But that's a minor nitpick, though. You know, very, very, very minor. All right, folks, that was episode sixteen, Young Justice review, failsafe. Stay tuned. Coming up next, episode seventeen. Peace. Peace.